Hey everybody, Seth with Every Man Prepping. And yes, we're gonna talk about the earthquake, the 4.8 earthquake that hit New Jersey, the tri-state area. Not that it caused any damage or anything, but what effects did it cause to people? What did they think about it? How they react? Is something good for you to learn from? What did you think about it? All that good stuff. We're gonna talk about what they called it. You know, you know, how did they label it? I don't believe in coincidences. They used Lebanon for a reason. We're gonna talk about that. And we're gonna hit a few other news stories uh, along the way that actually have more important meaning than this earthquake but this earthquake took news by storm this morning everybody's writing about it they're closing airports all that stuff 4.8 is not that big yes people felt it you can see videos of you know houses shaking and all but you know there was no damage it's just more of a, a scare but it, it's a good test and we're going to talk about that test so let's look at that stuff right now we see here from zero hedge no major impacts reported after earthquake rattles New York City and all through you know Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and all that. You can see here are the stars where it happened. Like I said, they're calling it the Lebanon Lebanon earthquake, and we can get into that more in detail about you know why that was being used by the media, why it's being pushed uh, as the closest city to it, but it really isn't. Anyway, there it is. People felt it. You know, you had uh, people in New York City saying they felt the impacts of it. They brief the mayor. He comes out and gives a statement. All that great stuff. They closed the airports for a while over there. JFK and a few other ones uh, in Newark. There's a ground stop to make sure, you know, the runway was fine. By the way, these things happen a lot in California all the time. 4.8 4 higher. No, nothing ever happens to the ground or airports or anything like that. I know it's an abundance of caution because, you know, it hasn't happened in over 100 years in that area. And it was more of a shock to the system than anything. So I can go on here and show you more stuff about people freaking out that their house shook and everything. But that's not the biggest uh, aspect of this. Uh, let's talk about some of the, the key things. So uh, as you see here pointed out on this uh, X post here, it says the epicenter was Lebanon, New Jersey. And as this guy pointed out here, you know, it was felt especially in Lebanon, New Jersey. And coincidentally, which I don't like told you, don't believe in coincidences, the quake struck just as Hezbollah's le leader, uh, Nasrallah, you see him there, is delivering a rare speech in Lebanon, outlining their next strategies against Israel. So, uh, you know, the leader of basically Hezbollah, run by Iran, supported by Iran, giving a speech in Lebanon, the country, at the same time an earthquake happens in New Jersey here. And, you know, it's kind of close to Lebanon, New Jersey. So let's use that name because we're pushing a narrative, you know. That, that's because, you know, tying the two together, you know, what's happening in the Middle East with Iran and everything. Oh, but look, and coincidentally, an earthquake in Lebanon, United States. See how they can push that? Just trying to drive fear, uh, gaslight people and whatnot. As you can see here, this is from the USGS website. Uh, this is where the earthquake happened. Here's Lebanon. So here, it's not much of a city at all. It's pretty small. You know, they, could they have called it the uh, Pottersville earthquake? They could have. Could they called it the, what is this, Califon earthquake? They could have. In fact, it's really close, as you can see, to uh, Tweak, Tewksbury Township. They could have named it that. But no, the media is running with Lebanon here because, well, it matches what's happening in, in the Middle East. So don't be gaslit by it. Don't be led astray. Yes, it's close, but they're just trying to push a narrative. Like I said, no real damage done. Nothing happened. But what is good to talk about all this is how did you react um, when it happened? If you're in that area, if you're in the Tri-State area, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Also, everybody, hit that like button. Let's get this message out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Share the video, all that great stuff. I really appreciate everything you guys do for the community. But going on here, like I said, if you lived in that area, write down below what you experienced, what you noticed other people doing, what you did. Because although it was small and nothing happened, were you thinking... Oh, damn, I'm not prepared for this. I really thought I was prepared. I had some stuff, but this was a big one or a big event or some other SHTF event. I'm really not ready. I thought it was, but I'm not. Uh, or were you, you know, sitting there going, okay, this is happening, but I'm ready. I got food. I got water. I got gasoline. I got a generator. I got solar. I have self-defense. I'm, I'm good. When this ends, I'm going to do an inventory. I'm going to self-assess. I'm going to go through and gain intel, gather intel, do all that, and see where we're at. If that's the stage you're at, good for you. Uh, but there's always stuff you can add and change. If you were the former and you're, you know, going, oh boy, I'm not ready for this. Uh, I don't know what I would do. I'm calling my friends and family. I'm on social media. I'm asking people if they felt it. If you're in that stage, write down, you know, what you think you need to do. Okay, this happened. 
I don't have enough food. I'm going to do that. I don't have enough water. I don't have any self-defense. I, I don't have a way to gain intel. Um, if you know, communications went down, I don't have backup combo. You know, if you're in that state, write down what you think you need to improve in, improve on, and start working on it. That's what this event is, is good for. It's a training event. You know, a little thing like this happened. Yes, unprecedented. Strange it happened, but it gives you time to reassess your preparedness. Where are you at? What do you need to change? Make improvements. Go from there. Secondly, or thirdly, I guess, right at this point, how did others react? Did other people in your neighborhood, your family freak out? Were they losing their minds? Did they have no idea what to do? And then multiply that by, I don't know, 100, 1,000 if something major happens, major SHTF event happens, whatever that event may be in your community. If something big happened, not just a small earthquake that lasted a few seconds, but something that took down the grid, the, the roads, uh, fighting, civil unrest, you know, how they can react if that really happens. Then you need to gauge yourself, need to prepare for those people when that happens. Because if those people are going wild and crazy, they're going to be danger to you and your family. So something else to think about during this. So gather all that info, take all this as like a test and learn from it, grow from it, change your preps, add your preps. You know, that's what this event is good for. So put down below all the stuff you learned, uh, knowledge you want to pass on and what you think you're going to do to improve uh, to get ready for when, well, you're going to need all this stuff. So moving away from that, let's continue on with other stories that we have uh, going on. And we're going to talk really quick about, and I'm going to just go through this really quick, the jobs report that came out. Um, it was 303,000 payrolls were added. You know, yay, it was great. But as I have highlighted here, you see, they were all part-time jobs. And mostly, like it says, to immigrants that came in, um, basically. And as I go down to this chart that I want to show you, you're going to see here, that full-time jobs actually lost 6,000 and they added 691,000 part-time jobs. Now, I don't know how they got to the number of payrolls being added 300,000 when they added 691,000 part-time. So, uh, you know, I don't know how that number came about in the financial world, but I'm just going with what they're putting out here as the numbers. Basically, you can see it's all part-time work. Is that be mostly because a lot of people are losing their full-time job and that's pick up part-time work because there's not another full-time available. Also, there's people who have full-time jobs, but inflation is so high and the wages aren't going up, they need that extra part-time work to make ends meet. So it's not like there's new jobs. There's more people working. A lot of these people have full-time jobs, and they're picking up a second part-time to cover up everything they need to cover to buy food, housing, all that stuff. And then, like I said, you have a, a lot of the uh, immigration coming in, taking a lot of the jobs and a lot of the uh, native-born people losing their jobs. So that's basically what came out of today's jobs report. So let that sink in. Love to hear your comments about that below as well. Going on from that, last night, Ukraine, they attacked the uh, you know nuclear bombers in Russia. They're at Ingalls Base. Right here it says airfields in Ingalls. Yeesk and Kursk were attacked uh, by drones. That's the, you know They're penetrating far. I don't know where the Russian air defense is, but... The report is that, you know, according to the information, three strategic bombers, the Tu-95MS, received serious damage. And there's also in Inks, I think it's pronounced, that two aircraft, um, the Su-25s, were also burned or destroyed as well. Um, these are nuclear-capable bombers, nuclear part of the nuclear triad of Russia. Not good they're getting, Ukraine's getting this far. Like I said, Ukraine's going to keep doing this, hitting, you know, refineries, hitting this until Russia smacks them so hard NATO has to get involved or they smack NATO back. Ukraine's not going to stop. The U.S. may want them to, but they're not going to. And behind the scenes, the U.S. may be telling them, go ahead. In the public, we're going to say no, but behind the scenes, go ahead and do this because, well, you know, NATO just came out yesterday. I don't even have it in this report, but, you know, NATO basically said, Ukraine's going to be part of NATO. We're going to see how to get them in there. Well, that basically means they want to go to war with Russia. So that's that story. Going off of that, we also had a drone go into Moldova from Ukraine. So remember I told you in this general area of Transnistria basically is what it is. They have the largest stockpile of ammunition, you know, in a in bunker system. Well, as you can see from the report right here, it says it's located in the Rybinsta region, uh, situated six kilometers from the border of Ukraine. Uh, they had a UAV, a, you know, a drone strike a radar facility. So, you know, we starting to open up attacks there. I don't know, but something to, we have to keep our eyes on. Moving on from that. We have this very short statement here from the uh, Pentagon spokesman and White House spokesman John Kirby uh, saying, we do not support independence for Taiwan. It was, you know, response to a question about 
China and uh, President Xi and Biden having a talk and what was said. And, you know, point blank, you know, they basically threw Taiwan under the bus saying, we don't support independence for Taiwan. Are they bending the knee to, the knee to China right now? Yeah, they might be. Uh, what I think this points out is the U.S. knows they can't handle a war with China and a war with Russia and a war in the Middle East with Iran and Israel and all that. You know, they can't go on three fronts. They can barely go on one front. Uh, they're having a heck of a time supporting NATO as it is. Uh, I mean, not supporting NATO, but supporting Ukraine, giving them all the money and everything. You know, what are they going to do if China gets involved? So I think they're trying to placate China. Like, China, please don't attack Taiwan. We don't, you know, want their independence. So don't go after them. It's Everything's good there. Um, you know, we don't support it. Uh, this has had a lot of blowback from a lot of people, especially the Taiwanese, everybody else saying, hey, are you just going to let us hang out to dry? Are you going to let China take us over? But that's what came out. They might change their mind a little bit, but I think this is more or less them saying, hey, we got our plates full with, you know, Europe and Middle East. China gets involved, we're toast. I mean, basically toast anyway, but this is basically an admission of that. And moving on for this, we have to mention the eclipse again because more dumb stuff is coming out of this. You know, this is a track 2017, 2024, and going on with the dumb things happening. The Texas Department of Transportation and put out an ex post. They said, due to the uh, solar eclipse on Monday, what is expected to cause severe traffic delays, no size or weight permitted travel will be allowed on that day from midnight to midnight in the following counties. So Department of Transportation for Texas saying, if you're in the path, you know, and you're truck driving, we're going to restrict the permits to drive through there with, you know, it's overweight, whatever they said, size, weight permitted travel is going to be not allowed. Are they going to stick to that? They can pull people over? I don't know. They're saying it's because it's going to be, you know, so much congestion. I'd believe that if we didn't have this map. So let me see if I can get a little bigger so you can see. So this, the dark line is the path of the, uh, the eclipse, the total, um, you know, uh, totality of the eclipse, the darkness. And then this is the cloud cover. So red and yellow is mostly covered. You're not going to see the eclipse. It's going to get darker and then light after about four minutes. Green is the only place where you're actually going to view the eclipse. But if you look on the path of totality, there's a little tiny section in Indiana here, a little bit, uh, Illinois a little bit, Indiana, Illinois, just a little bit, and then way up here in Maine, basically, maybe a little Vermont up here. Other than that, you're not going to see it. So you're going to tell me that Texas, which is all red, total cloud cover, they're predicting, that people are going to be flocking there to see nothing? Like I said, they're using an the excuse for something. If something happens, not going to be because of the eclipse, it's going to be because uh, you know, some man-made event. They're also saying people are pushing, you know, Iran's going to retaliate between now and the 9th. You know, when I put out earlier, I said, hey, why don't they just do it on the 8th, time it with the eclipse, just totally blow everybody's mind, you know, like, see that happen. So just be on your toes for Monday, you know, keep your eyes open, just like this earthquake that hit, don't freak out, don't overreact, just, you know, be open to anything happening. Most likely nothing's going to happen, but hey, the opportunity is there for, you know, like I said, a certain swan event or a certain flag event. So that's still going on. It'll be great when Monday's over and we can get through that and move on to, like I said, all these other problems we're having in the world. Now, lastly, let's check out gold and silver here. Uh, they're having a tear lately. They're going on a tear. So this is the current gold uh, numbers. We're at 2,324 an ounce. As you can see, last week or so, we're spiking up. That happens when inflation is due to rise, people are protecting their assets, uh, there's no trust in the US dollar, the bond market, people are flocking to gold because it's, well, the original money out there. And that's what happens when traders, people, retail start getting nervous. And you can see it's shooting up, it's all time high. This is all time high for gold. And people are saying, what about silver? Well, let's look at silver. Silver, percentage wise, even have greater gains. Look at that spike up, you know. Is this the quote unquote moonshot that everybody's looking for? Yeah, I don't know if I'm ready to call that yet, but it's at 2739 or so currently as we're filming this. Uh, hasn't been that high in a long time. Um, it's a great gains. I'd like to see it get over 30 and then maybe call that as a support level and then you know that we're really taking off. So gold and silver going up. Um, is it a sign there's uneasiness in the world? Yes, um, yeah, that is what is a sign of. And uh, if you have those precious metals, good for you. Hold on to them because, you know, the U.S. dollar... Uh, might be in for a, a bad time here coming soon. And I've been talking about that, so you should be ready for that. Along with the other stuff you're preparing for. You know, even if you're not in that area where the earthquake happened, you're not in the area where the eclipse is going on, hey, still take this time, 
you know, go through your list. Do I have my food, my water, my self-defense, my camo, my housing, my bug out plan, my bag, whatever it is. Uh, good time to go through it all and keep working on everything. Keep working, keep adding to it um, because, you know, as the dollar inflates away, it's better to have stuff than dollar bills that go to waste and basically become worthless. That's all I have for you. Love to hear from you guys what you think about this. Write it down below. And until next time, keep your ear to the ground, head on a swivel. Thank you.